Hi everybody. Welcome to the Nick the Brave Chemo Kitties and K9 podcast. I'm your host Nick the Brave. As someone battling cancer, I know how important it is to stay positive in the rough times. This is the only podcast that looks at the heroes behind the scene who help people that need it the most. Hi everyone, welcome to the Nick the Brave Chemo Kitties and K9 podcast. I'm your host, Nick the Brave, and today I am so excited about today's special guest, Top Chef alumna, Jim Carroll. Chef Carroll is one of the best chefs I know. She is owner of a a Philly Spice French restaurant, and she is great because she and I have worked together in, in her kitchen. Hi, Chef Carroll. Welcome to the Okay. I know I told the listeners a little about you. Can you tell more about yourself? Sure. Nick, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here with you and to spend some time with you. So a little bit more about me. I was on Bravo's Top Chef multiple times. I was on two all-star seasons where I competed. I was also on season six Las Vegas where I was a finalist. I made it all the way to the end. I didn't win, but I was a finalist. And I've done a bunch of different spinoffs on like Top Chef Life After. There's a new show coming up that's going to be out this summer. So in 2021, it's called Top Chef Amateurs. And I'm a judge and a mentor. And I get to cook and mentor and judge home cooks that come on the show and actually compete in past Top Chef challenges. So it's something that's like super, super fun and a really a feel good show. And I'm super excited about that. But I've, so besides all the TV things that I've done, I said, I have a restaurant Spice Finch in downtown center city, Philadelphia. And I also have a culinary experience company called Carol Couture Cuisine, where, you know, before COVID hit, I used to travel all over the world and do dinners and do classes with people in person. So this first question is, this podcast is about people who help others. You have many things going on in your life. Have you tried to help other people as you do all your jobs? So I always have. Ever since I was a little kid, my mom had instilled in me to always give back and to be kind and to pay it forward as much as I possibly can. And so I've always been a proponent of giving back to lots of different charities. One charity that I love and that I've been a part of for about 15 years now is Alex's Lemonade Stand, which is all about kids with cancer. And Alex was actually from Philadelphia and it started here and I've become friends, really close friends with her parents, Jay and Liz Scott. And I've done a bunch of things with them. I also work with the American Brain Foundation, which is another great foundation because it works with finding research, doing research and finding cures for everything related to brain problems, whether it was traumatic or a stroke, uh, ALS, tumors, migraines, uh, Alzheimer's, And that is something very near and dear to my heart because my mom has suffered from multiple strokes along with multiple people in my family. My grandmother had Alzheimer's and my fiance's mother has MS. So it's a lot of stuff that has to do with the brain, right? And, you know, when COVID hit, I wanted to be able to help my team and my employees uh, who were, you know, left without jobs and really struggling for a time and still are. We set up a GoFundMe page for them. I did lots of charitable contributions, giving back and feeding the frontline workers. I think for me, it's just always reaching out to different charitable organizations and pretty much saying yes to everything that comes in that I can handle to help out and raise money or just listen to somebody any way I possibly can. So I, it's, it makes me feel good, but it also, I know that I'm helping others out in many different ways. What made you get on the positivity track? For me, you know, it takes to be, to be on the positivity track. 
was something that was really important and a big change in my life because, you know, negativity takes up so much more energy and, you know, hate and bad feelings. And it's just bleeds into everything. It bleeds into your work, into your personal life. And it's just not a good feeling to have. And so to be positive and to motivate and to push any negativity out is something that's really important and something that I try and impart on, you know, not only my team at work, but along to my friends and my family and just surround ourselves with good positive vibes, right? A smile goes a long way. A simple, like, kind word goes a long way and it makes a big difference. What is the biggest impact you've had in people's lives and how do you think you've done that? You know, I think one of the things by being on Top Chef has opened up so many doors for me to be able to raise a ton of money for multiple different charities to give back for research and to do simple simple things for people, you know, just being able, I just recently in this past September gave like backpacks to children in my neighborhood, in my community that needed school supplies. And so it's, it's, I think I've had a big impact in many different areas and it's not stopping. (laughs) Um, You own a great restaurant and a creator. I know with the pandemic that is in drastically was hitting hard. What do you do to stay positive with the negative people that might be out there? Uh, You know, with the pandemic, it's actually been really hard because it has been such a devastation to the restaurant industry. And it's so easy to go down that rabbit hole to be negative with everybody and say, woe is me. And just throw your hands up and give up, right? Well, that's that's not the way to go. That's not the way who I am as a leader. And for me, those people that want to come in and have those negative feelings, I try and find the, the best thing in every situation. And I try and pivot to make moves in order to continue to go forward. And I try and bring those people along with me. And if they, you know, want to stay in their negative world, then that's fine. But I surround myself with just good feelings and good vibes and people that want to go forward and make a change. Not everybody has the same opinions. People are different. Do you ever think about how your positivity brings people together? If so, how do you think that works? You know, a lot of people have different opinions. A lot of people like I said, just want to give up and sit on the couch and do nothing and make excuses up and say, you know, COVID this and COVID that, or, you know, just find ways to get out of doing better. And so by me being positive and me creating, you know, doing Zoom hangouts with my team or with my friends and we can inspire each other and doing different chef collaborations. I'm in so many different groups. I'm in a really awesome women's chef group in Philadelphia where we, we lean on each other. We, you know, we cry, we laugh, we give advice, we give answers. And it's been, you know, having that support system of positivity and motivation has been you know, really great, not only for me that I've gotten from other people because they've been able to fulfill me, I've been able to fulfill them too. And so we've become stronger together. What are the positive things you would like to tell everyone to know about the people you've met in your travels? Oh, there's so many things. For me, I see so many strong individuals that are just finding, being creative and finding ways to push forward and to make it through this pandemic and to get out on the other side. And I've seen, you know, so many people that have gone up against adversity without the pandemic before, you know, different minorities. And, you know, for me, like being a woman and having to fight against like the male dominated world, there's been so many people that just push through and find the best way to do it without bringing other people down. So I think, you know, a lot of people have had that feeling of bringing together and uplifting. And I think that's been a really great message that I've gotten from many people. What are the long-term goals in terms of what you can do for other people? So some long-term goals for me 
is I basically always have an open door to anybody and they can, you know, get in touch with me over Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, text me, call me, and I will give advice whenever I can and help out in any way possible. But another long-term goal is one of the things that Billy, my fiance, and I are working on, we're working on creating different merchandise and being able to give proceeds from that back to different charities with the sales. So that's a long-term goal is to really just continue raising money and giving back. I always ask this question in my podcast. Who do you think is someone positive that should be on my podcast in the future? So I have a great answer for that. And I don't know if you've met him, but his name, is, he's a co-chef of mine here in Philadelphia. And his name is Michael Solomonoff. And he owns a restaurant named Zahav and Abe Fisher's. Goldie, Diesengoff, and Federal Donuts and Fried Chicken. And him and I started cooking together way back in the day. And he's gone through a lot of ups and downs in his life, but he has always been there to be positive and to speak the message and to speak the truth and to just lift everybody up. And he's one of the funniest people that I know. And he is one that loves to give back as well. So I can connect you with him if you want. He would be a great guest for you. Thank you for everything that you do for people through uh, your talents, Jeff Jin. It's a thrill to get to cook with you. And now it's a thrill to be able to tell you you how wonderful you are. Thank you for being, being on my podcast, Jeff Jin. This is the podcastfactory.com.